right, well today we have something that's kind of unusual. Um, and it's kind of a treat because it's, uh, well, we'll tell you along as we go along the way. Um, I got a snake call about a week ago, <clears throat> and it was uh, through an area of Poway that was, uh, had, you know, a canyon behind the house and, and open hills, pretty much, you know, a couple, as far as you can see after that. <clears throat> So uh, I caught this snake and I put it in a container and uh, first thing I noticed about it was that its markings were very unusual in the sense of it had coloration that was clearly something I hadn't seen before. So I recognized the pattern as being that of a Southern Pacific it felt like, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So anyway, I caught it and I brought it back and I went to my friend Mike, and my partner, and he and I discussed it and looked at it and found out that it had both uh, characteristics of the western, the, uh, excuse me, had characteristics of the southern Pacific that we felt it did, some of its features, and as well as it had the colorings and pattern markings of the red diamonds that are also found out here in San Diego County. So initially I thought possibly maybe it was a hybrid between the two of them, and that prompted us to contact a scientist to discuss it with him. Um, he gave us some information to go by and, and send us some things to uh, use in his, our, his, our research. So what we determined is that this is actually a, a western diamondback rattlesnake, which is not supposed to be in these parts of, this, of, of California. Um, they're usually on the eastern side and maybe perhaps mid-state. So the find one out here is kind of unusual and we're going to share that with you today. So this is a western diamondback and it is found from Texas all the way through to the mid-state of Cal mid -state California. But it's not supposed to be out here in San Diego County. So what we're, we're gonna do with them today is we're gonna take them out and we're gonna tube them. Mike and I are gonna tube him and put them in a tube so we can get a close-up look at them because uh, we have some things to go by here to, to uh, basically make sure our, their points and ideas are right about this. And we're gonna look at a certain pattern on, on his scales below his jaw that will tell us um, whether he's a western diamondback or if he's just a, a red diamond. We've got this guy tubed, it's nice and safe, and we can handle him and we can conduct our evaluation to determine what type of snake it is. So the first thing I want to show you here is if you look at his face, he's got these stripes on either side of his eyes. That's not uh, something you'd see in a red diamond rattlesnake, which is what we originally thought this one was. This is more consistent with what you'd see on a southern Pacific. But then when we move to the tail of the snake, we see the red and white bands. That is consistent with a red diamond, but it is not something you'd see on a Southern Pacific. And so that's why we originally thought, hey, is it possible that this is a hybrid? But after speaking to one of the local scientists who specializes in rattlesnakes, he showed us how to tell the difference. And to tell the difference, you have to look at the snake's chin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt this up. If you can see the scales, on either side of his chin are, they almost make like a V beneath the chin. On a red diamond, there is no V there and it's broken up into several smaller scales. On the Western Diamondback, it's one solid scale on either side of the chin. And that's how we're able to tell the difference. While we have this snake out, we're gonna take advantage of this time to talk about the rattles. And a lot of people think that the uh, idea is each, you count the buttons on them and each button indicates one year old. But that's not the case, and that's not the case. What these represent is each time the snake sheds its skin, it has a, it has a new button that appears. Um, so how many times a year this snake sheds depends on how well of a hunter he is. And that depends on how much food in, is in his environment and how good his eyesight is and how good of a, you know, good he is at ambushing his prey and, and coming up with meals. So the more he eats, the more he'll shed because he grows. 
So in this case, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, perhaps eleven. Eleven buttons here, I think. So if he shed twice a year, that means he's five years old, five or six years old, you know. So we'll have to see how that goes. And it's amazing about these things because they don't, I don't think they weigh as much as a paper clip does. They're just so lightweight, just so lightweight. And yet they make so much noise, which I'm glad they do. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put this one back in this container for right now. I'll let him back out, I guess. I'll let him back out. There you go. It's a fun idea. Well, thanks for sticking around and watching this educational video on a unique snake that's not supposed to be in San Diego. Uh, we have two working theories on how it got out here. The uh, first one is, is it hitched a ride on a, a hay truck that came out here to this area because this is a horse town, so there's lots of people purchasing hay, so it could have come out that way. Our other theory is that this is someone's pet that escaped or they released. Uh, looking at the the rattles on it those rattles are pretty well intact so that's also a likely theory as well we're not sure we probably never will know um we're not quite sure what to do with the snake you can't release it because it doesn't belong here so right now we're waiting to hear back from the zoo maybe they'll take it uh, if not i'm sure something else will come along but uh, thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe